Peanut Butter and Burgers, KFC and Games Consoles, a seasoned newsreader and a veteran war criminal. These strange combinations are all the rage nowadays, and despite all logic, they actually work. Mostly. There's a chance this is an elaborate joke gone too far from that one friend you remember that dunked their McDonald's fries in their milkshake, but anyway. Video games are no exception to this phenomenon of mushing two things together and seeing what sticks. Most games borrow elements from other genres to some degree, with the likes of driving segments in shooters, sports in open world titles like GTA, and puzzle minigames in literally everything. The lines between clear-cut genres are already blurred, but some brave developers go even further to shake up the status quo. Rocket League merged driving with football to huge success. Brutal Legend mixed third-person action with real-time strategy, presumably while reciting Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast, and recently Returnal translated frantic bullet hell gameplay into a 3D shooter roguelike. Not every hybrid genre goes well, but whether it's more chili and chocolate or chalk and cheese, there's no denying these ones are stranger than most. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 weirdest genre mashups in video games. Number 10. Lemnisgate. An unconventional entry, but this mix of FPS and turn-based strategy absolutely fits the category of, huh, don't see that every day. To borrow a comparison we've seen a few times, this is what you'd get if Christopher Nolan designed video games. It's a time-warping multiplayer shooter, with five alternating turns for each player using different specialists with unique abilities every time, but crucially, each turn is layered into the same 25-second loop, creating some mind-boggling cause and effect scenarios. You could capture an objective on round one before your opponent, say, drops a mine on that location, killing your player before he even collects the point. If, with your next character, you then kill that opponent before they place the mine, then your turn one plays out as before, minus any gruesome landmine injuries. And so on, and so forth, until you're making plays to stop other plays that counter your plays that haven't even happened yet. You sound insane. No big 64-player gunfights, just one-on-one -on -one mind games in a wild first-person 4D chess match. A similar time meddling concept was used recently in 2020's Quantum League, but had a few too many rough edges to truly win critics over. Number 9. Puzzle Quest While many RPGs feature complex layers of systems that are basically puzzles of their own, we're pretty sure that there's not much crossover in the Venn diagram between fans of Bejeweled and Baldur's Gate. About the same number who actually thought a mobile Diablo game was a good idea. Is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? And yet, when Puzzle Quest Challenge of the Warlords came out in 2007, it shocked everyone with a winning combo of match three puzzles framed in a high fantasy RPG setting. You can pick from familiar classes like Warrior, Druid, Bard, or Warlock, each with different effects. You then do typical RPG stuff – travel the land, take on quests, level up your character, and fight in turn-based battles. That's when Grandma's sick Candy Crush skills come in handy, as all battles are fought via competitive puzzles, matching different symbols to use different attacks or spells whilst also gaining loot, gold, and experience. It's not as deep as most dedicated RPGs, but this unique twist on a classic puzzler was a huge hit and led to six sequels along with inspiring countless hybrid puzzle titles like Gems of War or You Must Build a Boat. Number 8. Disintegration most RTS commanders are happy to sit high in the sky, detached from their thoroughly disposable troops. But if you ever want to get a bit closer to the cannon fodder, sorry, brave soldiers, then 2020's disintegration might sound appealing, at least on paper. It combines RTS and FPS elements, having you hovering overhead, albeit still in range of enemy fire, as you issue squad commands to take down opposing forces in a future full of fancy tech and giant mechs. Like we said, an interesting concept on paper. In reality, both the FPS and RTS parts were vastly undercooked, with weak shooting mechanics making it hardly worth trying for yourself, leaving you with uninspiring, samey squad commands that lacked any sense of strategy. Plenty of effort was made with storytelling and world building, evident by the high quality cutscenes and voice acting, but sadly, it couldn't rescue this promising concept or the developers. Not only were the multiplayer servers shut down only five months after launch, but the new studio V1 Interactive announced in March of 2021 it would be closing down too, meaning no second chance to learn from their mistakes. Still, you've always got cult classics like Brutal Legend or the charming, almost puzzle-like qualities of Pikmin to scratch that RTS hybrid itch if you have it. Number 7. Valkyria Chronicles 
To the outside observer, JRPGs can sometimes feel much of a muchness, similar from one to the next, so when a series as unique as Valkyria Chronicles comes along, it's worth pausing that playthrough of Dragon Quest XXXIX to pay attention. Immediately striking, thanks to its beautiful visuals resembling colorized pencil sketches along with a setting loosely based around World War II-era Europe, there's plenty of substance to go with this style. The series, first debuting in 2008, takes a grand JRPG-style storyline and blends it with turn-based strategy as you fight battles filled with World War stylized weapons, tanks, and artillery. Except, during fights, you're not restricted to the typical grid-based confines of titles like XCOM or Fire Emblem, but instead free to move and aim like a third-person shooter so long as you have movement left. Positioning and cover are still important, but thankfully your success is less reliant on the cruel gods of RNG. It's a style reminiscent of Worms 3D or Hogs of War, and the franchise is still going strong on its sixth release as of 2018. Number 6. The Guardian Legend most of the games in this video are fairly new, and for good reason, given that pre-1990 genres were even more loosely defined than today. Many simply didn't exist as we know them, or were in the early stages of creation, though pioneering titles like Herzog's 5 for the RTS genre or Maze War for first-person shooters did exist. If many genres don't exist, then it's hard to make a conscious effort to mash two of them to make something new. But The Guardian Legend, a 1988 title for the NES, was such an odd mix, even back then, that we can't not include it. The game mixed top-down action RPG sections reminiscent of Zelda titles with the scrolling shoot-'em-up gameplay popular at the time. The Guardian Legend was the sequel to the 1986 top-down shooter Gardic, but along with major gameplay changes also featured a wild story where you have to stop a runaway planet, Naju, colliding with Earth, taking control of a robot lady that can transform into an interstellar fighter jet. Oh, you thought you were piloting that ship? Wrong. You are the ship. Number 5. Dark Chronicle What's this? A game where you fight monsters and craft items that help you build a beautifully quaint village? We know what you're thinking, but it's not that. Put away your mind coins, they're no good here. The 2003 PS2 title Dark Chronicle, or Dark Cloud 2 if you want to get American about this, has plenty of standard action RPG aspects, battling through procedurally generated dungeons and collecting loot, but there's also a surprisingly in-depth city planner mode. Well, more like village planner, but still. The Giorama mode lets you use materials found in the deep dark dungeons to create buildings and items, decorating various locations throughout the game, fulfilling farm requirements to help each community thrive, which even affects events later in the story. It's the perfect respite after a long day downed dungeons. Naturally, plenty of other titles have since picked up on this gameplay loop of intense action and creative downtime, from Stardew Valley's dungeon delving to spice up the chill farming sim, to Fallout 4 cashing in on the Minecraft craze with their own base building mechanics. Number 4. Crypt of the Necrodancer like loot boxes in a yearly EA Sports franchise, roguelikes are everywhere. There's no denying it, but unlike loot boxes, these rascal resemblers aren't all bad. Far from it, and there's a much less insidious reason for the invasion of scoundrel synonyms. The features that define the roguelike genre, randomization of levels, items, etc., encouraging multiple playthroughs, trying different builds, they can all slot nicely into more mechanical elements crucial to other genres. Your beat em ups, your shoot em ups, your space combat and crew management um ups, and so on. A roguelike adds the perfect extra spice to an established recipe. But a rhythm action roguelike with a rocking soundtrack and rock hard difficulty? In fact, this may be the rockingest case of cross pollination since Run DMC and Aerosmith. That's a music reference, did you understand it? In 2015's Crypt of the Necro Dancer, every step, every attack, every action must be timed to the beat of the music as you traverse the increasingly treacherous dungeons, performing beautifully choreographed dance fights that make Capoeira look like a drunken Macarena. All the standard roguelike trappings of randomized loot and ever-changing levels are here, but they've never sounded this good. The game even had a Zelda-themed spin-off in 2019, Cadence of Hyrule, which also remixed the series' most iconic songs into some absolute bangers. If you're not raving to Gerudo Desert, then you're clearly going to the wrong club nights. Number 3. Battle Chef Brigade Sure, we've all seen the hipster fast food joints that slap two opposing food types together then slap a £20 markup on it for good measure, but what if you could play a video game equivalent with grisly monster bits instead of hand-reared, free-range avocados? And what if that video game was also a delightful mashup itself, combining 2D brawler combat with a twist on the match-three puzzle genre? Well, you've 
got yourself a recipe for a deliciously fun time. And stomach cramps. Seriously, metaphors are fine, but don't actually eat the game, okay? Battle Chef Brigade impressed audiences in 2017 with a cooking game where you had to go out and source the ingredients yourself by slaying all manner of fantastical beasts. A bit like Monster Hunter if it was less about using monster giblets for crafting oversized weapons and more about helping those clever culinary kitties. Every element is well balanced and blends together nicely. Fighting bigger foes is riskier and takes longer, but drops better ingredients, which lets you make tastier dishes that will unlock better equipment for combat or the kitchen, all helping you net those coveted Michelin stars. Number 2. Odama We've seen some weird things in our time, but this, this foe is beyond any of us. Odama combines real-time tactical wargaming with a pinball game. Not like a pinball game with a few themed stickers and a compressed film score that chimes up every minute. You've got actual units of feudal Japanese troops clashing on a battlefield, all at the mercy of this giant stone ball, the titular Odama, as it gets pinged around by some conveniently placed giant flippers, crushing all who stand in its path. The goal is to get the giant ball to the top of the screen by using strategy, guile, and Okay, just fling the massive rolling death machine at everything, that should do it. This is Peak Nintendo, an obscure game with a crazy concept released as the last exclusive for the GameCube in 2006, at a point where others were already kicking off the next console generation. It also came with a wacky peripheral, the GameCube microphone, which you could use to bark orders at your troops like Rally or Push Forward. Oh, and it was produced and designed by Seaman creator Yutaka Saito, which explains a lot. So tell me, do you own a computer? Number 1. Spore It's only fitting that a game stupidly ambitious enough to try and recreate the entirety of biological evolution across billions of years would also attempt to blend almost every game genre under the sun. Released in 2008, Spore can be described as a very literal life simulation, but it's also an RTS and a survival action game and a god game, and a spacefaring grand strategy, and a simple 2D survival game. The sheer variety of gameplay styles is staggering as you grow from a single-cell organism to the most dominant species in the galaxy, all while adding animal bits to your bizarre creation like an omnipotent Dr. Frankenstein. You start at the cell stage of evolution before crawling onto land in the creature stage, making friends or wiping out enemies as you evolve to meet new challenges. The tribal stage is predominantly RTS warfare and empire building, which then advances into the civilization stage, and finally, the space stage, where you send your plucky creations into orbit towards the center of the galaxy. While each stage might lack the depth of similar games of that style, these are no mere mini-games either, offering the strangest mashup of various genres we'll likely never see again in a single game. 